Today on V8 Extra, we celebrate Queensland ties. We're at Dreamworld on the beautiful Gold Coast, home of the V8 Supercars Red Line Experience. It's 15 years since moves were first made to create the championship we know today. Our special guest is the man in the engine room, series chairman Tony Cochran. Warren Love and Tim Slater are also a hand to sample the fun here on the coast. And look ahead to the Armoral Gold Coast 600. That's all day on V8 Extra. Hi everybody, welcome once again to V8 Extra. Great to have your company today. Yes, we're right smack bang in the middle of the Dreamworld theme park complex, home of the V8 Supercars Redline Experience, where you can blaze around Mount Panorama with all of your mates. Well, Queensland is a very important market to the V8 Supercar Company. It's where our head office is based. We've got three huge events in the state. We're promoting the fact that the lights are on for business in the state of Queensland after all the devastation earlier in the year and not far from now we've got a very important event coming up just down the road the armor all gold coast Secret. well it's just on 15 virtually to the day see v8 supercar championship as we know it came into being the guy that was part and part of the whole process joins us today we drag him onto the program from time to time nice to have you here kicking today Tony. yeah kicking and screaming chairman tony cochran welcome thanks neil it's great to be here 15 years it's gone like that so the question here is how do we tell 15 years in 15 seconds well you can't of course and uh it's been an amazing journey and it's it's quite extraordinary that you know 15 years has passed by you know um, we were both a lot younger uh, i certainly had more hair <laughs> uh, both of us had darker hair yes but um Look, it's been a, a, an amazing ride, a, just an extraordinary ride. And uh, if no one, else, uh, no one accuses anymore, not in the distance. What I want to do before we get too deeply into the interview is wind the clock and, in fact, go to Sandown back in 1996 when Tony made his first announcement that he was going to become involved in this series. Well, we uh, formed a joint venture company between the AMSC and TIGA to, uh, and, of course, ING to and uh, market uh, Group A touring car racing from the start of the 1997 season. What term is um, to uh, come up with a new look series uh, across the board for 1997, which will include uh, races in New Zealand and Asia? Well, I think they are an Australian icon, really, and uh, they are as much Australian as meat pies and uh, kangaroos. And we're going to make sure that uh, it becomes a regional sport, not just a domestic one. I have to say, Tony, there's some familiar phrase all in all that. We've been mantra for the last decade and a half. I, I know how it started clearly, but can you explain to our fans how things got started? And one of the things I get frequently is, what was the whole IMG thing all about? Of course, when I first came up with the idea, it was actually my personal idea, and I, I ran a paper on it and tried to convince IMG into it. And, uh, you know, now truthfully, of course, what happened, IMG were very interested in this. They had not a lot of it in the thing I called a Vesco um, and then with a very short space of time of course I ended up uh, in a situation where uh, I left IMG and James Earth, Scafidi and David Coe we started SEL so IMG um, structured even before the company got going structured a deal where we bought uh, the 22 and a half of a Vesco and IMG, uh, as a quid pro quo, ran the first four or six Bathurst for us. One of the things I want to do just while you're talking there, Tony, I've reached down and grabbed the V8 Supercars, the whole story, written by a mate of ours, Gordon Lomas. Probably a handy thing on a Father's Day weekend to promote, but it's good to the yarn in here, hasn't it? Because, I mean, as you said at the top, it's almost impossible to tell what's a really complex story in this whole process. Yeah, it is. It's an incredibly complex story, as you'd expect, when you're dealing with all the macerations that we dealt with back then. I think Gordon's made a you know, a really good fist of trying to tell the story and uh, there's some parts of it I violently agree with and other parts I violently disagree with, but that's, uh, that's how any story goes. We're right in the heart of a very vibrant location here on the Gold Coast and you've got a relationship with the region of Australia. The series has. We've been coming here since back in 1994. We've been uh, using this venue as a part of the championship since 2002, I think ever since 96. This is a very important market for the V8 Super Company. It is. Because, and it was just, uh, I mean, I live here, so, um, uh, and a couple of the teams were located here in those days, as two or three teams, um, and it's become our pilot, if you like, it's become, uh, for 
you know, the viewers who don't understand Charlotte in North Carolina is the headquarters, the spiritual home of NASDAQ become our kind of spiritual home, the Gold Coast, and we've had a great working relationship with the government here uh, throughout the whole length of that time. And, um, you know, we now have our own home event in Armoral G600, which is just a, a great event, a great fun weekend, and we're delighted to be running it. And you were the guy that had the original car operation here. That's how I first met you. I mean, that goes way back a long time since John the first one here on the streets of the Gold Coast back in 91. Yeah, I involved in, um, the government asked me to come to the Gold Coast race in 95. Uh, they were in a fair bit of trouble financially and uh, I got involved, we configured it a bit and one of the very first decisions I made which preceded uh, uh, my involvement with um, uh, Group A Touring Cars as well as to bring Group A Touring Cars back onto the bill here yeah. on the coast. So a lot of history. A lot of history. We're going to go to the break and remind you of some of that history and in fact a racetrack just out of the road over the years generated plenty of action. Let's go back to 2005 where Tempest was on a couple of occasions. It's an official, you're a wuss, you should be here. Look at the view. I love you, Mum. I love you, Mum. Uh-oh, here we go. Ah! How's your hands? <laughs> Slade and Warren Luff lurking around Dreamworld at the moment, having a good time. We'll drag them onto the panel a little bit later in the program. Welcome back. Our special guest today is Chairman of V8 Supercars, Tony Cochran. And Tony, we said in that previous segment that there been some moments in this championship. It all began back in 1997. But one of the things for me that I think real milestone, if I may, is to suggest that what was then the Adelaide 500, now the Clipsal 500, was a real masthead point for us. So that was a very important moment we were able to go back to Adelaide. Uh, absolutely, no. uh, it's, it's tremendous. After 12 odd years, the government announced um, late uh, last week the huge economic impact from the from this year's event so we're still making a splash all these years on but Adelaide absolutely was one of those great watershed moments uh, stood up and we proudly declared that uh, we could run a street race people would come and it would be a success um, and uh, we dived in the deep end of the pool and I actually think it worked so brilliantly well for the championship in the sense that it convinced everybody up and down the pit lane that we were the real deal because yeah. up until then you know I'd been the loud mouth saying we were the real deal but uh, it took that in really to get everybody focused and uh, success followed. I can remember you giving me a call at one stage saying what do you think the nation of it's not running at Bathurst I mean if you recall there was the big stink in the time where there was the battle between V8 Supercar and Super Touring and one of your famous statements was there are no sacred sites we can go anywhere. Tell us about that. Yeah I mean when I said there are no sacred sites the history has tried to um, write uh, what was said that day in the tent. I was referring to the fact that it's Stage, we were negotiating with the consortium who ran the Bathurst 1000 as it was back in those days, the AMP Bathurst 1000. And clearly, what I was uh, pointing out was that if they didn't come on board what we were looking for, then we could do our own thing. Yeah. I, I didn't actually mean we would leave Bathurst for the rest of our lives because clearly that would have been a mistake. Um, and they didn't come on board, so we did thing anyway. Um, but even that, you know, right off the bat, the, the very first uh, Bathurst 1000 for the Supercars, which I think in those days was two weeks after the AMP 1000, was just a great success. Yeah. We've got a way to start. Uh, people voted with their feet. And, um, you know, uh, the rest now, uh, once again, at Bathurst is history. A couple of double barrel questions within one, if you like, here. One is, have there been any clunkers along the way I guess like most things in life and in business there are things that you get right and things you get wrong and you talked earlier especially in that early interview that we saw a moment ago about the importance of international reach and you're still saying that to this day so cover off both those topics Paul. well 
Um, you know, contrary to uh, uh, some people would write, I'm, I'm actually here. I do make mistakes, and I make some really big ones occasionally. And um, uh, Canberra was a huge mistake. I should have never agreed to go at that time of the year, and I should have seen the political uh, fight that was going on that we were spinning ourselves into. So, they, you know, that was a mistake. I never go on as a mistake because, it, once again, it convinced everybody in the pit lane we could travel internationally, 600 people, 280 tonne of freight. So I, I think that was a bit of really. I don't think I don't see that one as a negative. But yeah, we've made a few errors, but by God, we've got an awful lot too. I mean, the sport today is phenomenal shape, particularly when you look at our sport with other sports around the world in motorsport. We're going to take another break there, Tony. Unfortunately, never enough time. As we go to the break, reminded once again of the Armour Gold Coast 600. Wind the clock back to 2009, and Jamie Wincup, who should have been in control, was suddenly out of it. Oh! Tim Slade, Moran Luff being lunatics in and around the Dreamworld complex here on the show very, very shortly. Tony Cochran is our special guest. Tony, we didn't get to talk in the last segment as I wanted to about the international events that are very important to us. I also wanted to talk about the Sydney Telstra 500 because that was an event very near to your heart as well. Well, absolutely. Um, if, if you're going to be a major sport in this country, you have to have a big presence in the Sydney market. And we were never going to have that at the uh, traditional circuit in Sydney, we, we always knew we had to have a big presence and uh, Sydney Pick Park is just a great venue. We've proven now, you know, for all our detractors in this, we've had nearly 350,000 people. And so any sport would happily take those numbers, happily. The international side of things? Uh, look, that's just a part and parcel of our lives now. You know, we, we clearly, the FIA have recognised that. They've granted us uh, international status. Uh, we are going to grow to five or six international events. I'm very confident by season 2013, uh, on my watch, we'll be at 18 events. And uh, that growth is going to come, not at the expense of Australian rounds, it's going to come at the, right. at the building of up to 18 international events. So we should pop up you know, nearly every second week TV in 2013. And that was going to be one of my questions, because that's something that fans ask us. Us, is the international expansion at the expense of domestic racing? So the answer to that is no. No, not at all. I mean, there was some rubbish really about Tasmania and we were, you know, looking to get rid of that to go somewhere international. That's not all. We absolutely want to stay in Tasmania. I still remain very committed to do a new three-year event uh, with the Tasmanian government and for us to continue on its work. And very quickly, just recently, the company's been sold. Archer Cal now the major stakeholder in the V8 supercar business. How's that working out? Obviously, it's early days. It's a massive change for not only the teams, but for our business, our management group. Um, clearly, it's part of how we're going to expand and go forward and become a bigger uh, identity. Um, and um, I, you know, we're in the tough growing pains of that at the moment, but I, I really am very, very excited by next year we'll be seeing some really good output from that. And um, I think uh, the business and the sport has a unbelievably exciting future. Tony, as always, great to catch up with you. you. want to do it more often. Thanks very much for dropping in today. What we're going to do now is have a look at some of the highlights of last year's Armour All Gold Coast 600. When we come back, Tim Slade and Warren Love. And the Gold Coast 600 is underway. Here goes Bill Nee. He's spun around in the low entry. Four cars a wheel for Caroline. Garth Tander, you'll take them any way they come.
was a pretty wild gig last year, but not as wild as the stuff that you two maniacs have been doing here all day and all morning. Welcome to V8 Extra, boys. Hey, man, how are you? You green? Oh, <laughs> it was, uh, there was a few moments there where you started to feel a little, a little bit sick in the stomach. Definitely had to get the last ride over a number. Yeah. But see, that's the beauty of being the host, because I can see folks yeah. do this stuff. Uh, Armour all got cut not far away. Who you got driving with you? We've got Marino and Frank Kitty. Sports car man. Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be real quick. And, and Elliot. Elliot again. Yeah. Yep. So he's coming off some good form on the on the horses, which is good to see. Yeah, last weekend was a second at Sears Point, I think. So and you guys took last year. Yep. So you got the band together. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's a, it's a real plus to have the same guy, you know, in the same car for the, the year. Have a little lie down, just relax, boys. We're going to take a brief break. When we're back, we'll discuss the Armour All Gold Coast 600 and importantly the fourth 500 Coast of Philip Island and Bathurst. Stay with us on V8 Extra. with us and uh, you guys been looping around this like a maniac so you can have that all on your own but we do recommend that it's a good thing to do now just before the break we're talking about the armor all gold coast 600 you've got a couple of heavyweights joining you both but the most immediate problem for both of you now is the 500 k's at uh, philip island and thousand k's at Bathurst. fantastic events because you've got different co-drives for that yeah look i've got nathan pretty on board for both philip island and Bathurst. and look nathan's a seasoned competitor i think this is his 12th this year so plenty of miles We've been able to give him runs in the Friday practice. We've got a test day up soon. So, look, Nathan's going to be uh, a really good guy to have on board, a very sort of experienced and yeah. a safe guy to have there. And you too. Uh, Daniel Gore, for me this year. Uh, Daniel drove with Simon Lovers back in 2009 with uh, with Johnny Mack in their second car. He's driven my car probably six or seven times this year, and he's he's got, oh, he's in some really good form in the in the Carrera Cup. Great driver, and you know, can't wait to uh, to pair up with him. Time now for Ford. Email. And this is a question that's appropriate to both of you. It's from Phil Dunster uh, to Woomba. He wants to know whether or not you blood only drive vehicles or, or do you have other jobs? Of course, you're the perfectly equipped. Uh, you, you do all sorts of things, don't you? I do all sorts of things. You get on rides, you fly around the park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, obviously, uh, my sort of weekday job is I drive in the stunt show out there at Movie World. But, um, but yeah, also other racing this year. Obviously, uh, I paired Lounsey at the 12 hour in the Audi. And both he and I over there at May, uh, we attempted four hour race but things didn't quite go to plan and we spoke to you uh, last week on the program and you do a bit of driver training yeah a little bit of driving here and there in between the race winnings and the obvious sort of pr stuff that, that comes along with the uh, with the driving duties but, um yeah other than that a lot of, a lot of fitness training during the week and, and trying to keep busy and getting driven crazy by blokes like me i'm in there <laughs> yeah. uh, all the time really busy period coming up guys i really love this part of the year because it's a slippery slope all the way to see a lot a lot of racing, big intensity, a lot of points up for grabs. You're the man at the moment, but you're on a the Gulf Western Oils team, so there's a lot going on. Yeah, look, for, for us as a team, it's really important this second half of the season that we start to try and sort of build a bit of momentum and start to improve our results. It certainly hasn't been the, the start to the season that we all want. Had a lot of internal changes within the team, so hopefully we'll start to get a little, little bit more stability and uh, and start to sort of work forward. What's been the tough, what's been the tough deal there, Warren? What's the drama? Oh, I think th there's a, a, a lot of little things along the way. Uh, our fair share of mechanical problems and all that sort of stuff, but just uh, not being able to get the best out of the car in qualifying and just uh, a general overall lack of grip. Uh, as we've seen the guys garages down at HRT, they've certainly been having their troubles this as well. And, yeah. and we get a lot of information from them also. So, as I said, we're trying to sort of build a bit of momentum and start getting some sort of result. And in your world, you've been Mr. Media. Everywhere I look, you're on radio, on television, the internet, all over the place. It's yeah. been fantastic been to get best, that success. Best mate. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's been, been good. I'm stalking I'd, you. I'd rather it that way than not, for yeah. sure. But um, yeah, obviously, you know, great result at uh, Queensland Raceway, and it's a good time of the year to have some form uh, leading into the Enduros. Well, I know you guys are chomping at the bit to be able to get back out park here 
and have a bit <laughs> of fun. It's time for us to go. We've got to pay some bills and get on with the next program. Thank you very much for to your company at Byron. So our next V8 telecast is on H500 from Phillip Island. The season of Jonas once again. Really looking forward to it. September 16 through 18. Telecast details up on screen. Next weekend we'll preview the event in the studio right here on X. Mark Scaife. And we're going to leave you today with a complete contrast to here on the Gold Coast. The boys were down at Perrishire during the week having a bit of fun in the snow to launch a cheap auto Bathurst 1000. If you enjoyed our presentation today from Dreamworld. Look forward to your company next weekend. Don't forget if you're up on the coast here, come visit Dreamworld and the Armour Gold Coast 600 coming up very soon. Bye for now.